Hi there, my name is Vince from Mr Telephone and today I'm going to talk about how to fit a Cat6 Ethernet plug onto Cat6 cable. So uh, the plugs, they're often known as RJ45, they're often known as 8P8C and they're these little things here. Little Ethernet plug to allow you to plug your router into your PC or your Xbox or whatever you want to connect up. So, obviously you need cable, you need strain relief boots and you need the plugs. Now you do get different types of plugs. You get Cat 5E and Cat 6 plugs. They look very similar, but they are in fact different. Now I'll show you on the cable in a minute, but just for the time being, if you have a look at the plug, this one here is a Cat 5E, and this one here is a Cat 6. And if you look closely at them, hopefully you will see that the holes on the Cat 5E are straight. They're in a line right the way across. And on the Cat 6 ones, you've got high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low going across. So they're actually uh, different. On the Cat6, it provides more separation of the wires. So if you're using a Cat5e cable, use a Cat5e plug. And if you're using a Cat6 plug, use a Cat6 plug. Also, Cat6, Cat6 cable is ever so slightly thicker than Cat5e cable. So uh, yeah, uh, make sure you use a Cat6 plug. It's just it's easier to see if you actually look at these cables here. I've wired this one up already. This The white one is a Cat6 and the black one is a Cat5e. And if you have a look, you can hopefully see that on the Cat 5e, the wires are straight, and on the Cat 6, they're staggered. Okay, and also make sure that the plug you're buying does solid core and stranded cable. The cable I'm doing today is solid core. I prefer using solid core cable, but uh, yeah, make sure the plugs you get, because you can get plugs that do just solid or just stranded, but the majority of them do do solid and stranded. I have done a video on that. If you want to look at my other videos, you will see that I've already done a video. So uh, yeah, you're going to need to get yourself some crimpers. These are nicer ones. These are ratchet ones, or these are the cheaper ones. Today I'll be making the cable using the cheaper ones. You get these for under £10 from, uh, from eBay, from people like myself. You will also need a little cutter because the Cat6 cable is made up slightly differently than the Cat5e cable. It's got a little cross member going right the way through it, so I'll show you that in a minute. So you need the cutter to remove it. You can use this to cut it, but I like using this because you can get right in there, and I'll show you that show you that in a minute. And also some cable strippers as well. Now you don't have to use cable strippers. Most cable does have a, a little drawstring in it. So for example, this uh, this cable here. You can just cut it roughly, however you want. You can just cut it all over the place and then you know that when you get to this drawstring, you can just pull it down and as you can see, it will nicely cut the sheath of the cable and it won't damage any of the wires inside. So you can use a, you can use a drawstring. I've got some proper cutters, so I'm gonna be just using the uh, using these cable, cable strippers. So what you do is, first of all, make sure you put the strain relief boot on first. There's nothing more annoying than crimping your plug on, spending five, 10 minutes crimping your plug on and realize you forgot the strain relief boot. It's a nightmare. You then have to cut the plug off and start again. So always put your strain relief boot on first, get into a habit of doing that. Then you get your stripper and you just need to strip back about an inch or so, a little bit more. Okay. Now I know I'm not gonna have damaged any wires because you can set the depth on this particular cable strippers. And listen, you see that is snapped. Yeah, so I know now that I haven't damaged any of the wires on the inside, so I don't need to worry with the drawstring because uh, I, I actually physically snap this off, but now I've got a nice straight line. Sometimes when you're using the drawstring, it's a little bit harder to get a straight line. It can go a bit jaggedy. doesn't really make a difference, but it's nice when the plug's all finished to have a nice straight line. So now, at the moment, this still looks just like Cat 5e cable, but when you strip it across like this now, you can see that it's got this plastic cross member going right the way through it. And this actually separates each of the pairs of wire in the Cat6. So on Cat5e, which is this fella here, all the wires are bunched together. So obviously they're all twisted in their pairs, but they're all bunched together. But on the Cat6, you've actually got a plastic cross member that separates them all. So it makes the cable ever so slightly thicker, and it also makes it a little bit harder to terminate. So what I do is, I fold all the wires out of the way, and you could use this just to cut it, but what I like to do is, I like to actually get right in there at an angle. Make sure you don't snip the wires, but I, I like to get right in at an angle, go round, and I like to cut, cut each part of the cross. Put them that one, that one there. And then by doing that, when we 
twisted off the cuts deeper down. If you were just to cut it here, it would still get in your way a little bit. I like to get the cuts right deep in. So then when you come to actually doing the plug, the idea is that you don't have to untwist as much of the wires because you want to keep the twist as far as possible up to the plug. So basically, we want the sheath, that's the Cat 5E, let's get rid of that one, that's the Cat 6. We want the sheath to go as much into the plug as we can get it. And sometimes if you have that plastic cross member sticking up, it's hard to get the cable into the sheath, uh, the cable into the plug. So we want to get it in as deep as possible. And the deeper you get it in, then the less of the wires you're gonna have untwisted because we're gonna have to untwist all these wires from here to here. But remember, in here, the wires are still all twisted. So we want as little wires showing as possible coming out here. So to begin with, just untwist all the wires. Now there's two standards you can use. You've got the T568A or the T568B. I'm gonna be using the T568B because that's what most people use nowadays. If you were to buy a patch lead, for example, let's go back to this patch lead here. If you can see, it starts with the oranges. So it starts with the orange, then the green. The difference between the A standard and the B standard is the green and the orange pair of wires are swapped around. The blue and the brown stay the same, but the green and orange are swapped around. So on the B, it starts with the orange on pin one and two. And on the A, it starts with the green on pin one and two. So if you're doing an additional point in a network already, then just copy what's already there. Take up a, co a couple of sockets and see what's there. And if they're all using the A configuration, use the A configuration. But nowadays it's mostly the B. And if you're doing new work, just uh, if you're doing it in this in your house now and you haven't got any network points, just, just do the B because then it matches up to all your patch leads and stuff. So what you need to do is just undo these wires. It doesn't matter that you're undoing all the twists because remember it's still twisted all in the, the sheath itself. Now the color code is gonna be white orange, then orange white, or solid orange, then white green, then blue, then white blue, then green, then white brown, then brown. And what you do is flatten them along as you go along because it'll make it so much easier to get into the plug. So if you have a look there, you will see you've got white orange, orange, white green, let's get this out of the way. Let's hold it like that, right. White orange, orange, white green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. And you hold it so that the white orange is on the left hand side as you're holding it. And when you put your plug on, you do it so the pins are facing up. So basically when you're looking at your plug with the tab away from you, like I've got it to the camera now, over here is pin one. So pin one is this side and then pin eight is this side over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's how you want it. You want the white orange to start on the pin one. So now, how much, uh, how much should you strip back? Well, it can be trial and error. I mean, you can try and measure it off here, but what I normally do is I strip a bit off, I cut, I cut it, I cut it, I push it in, and if I can cut more off it, then I just pull it out and cut more off it. So what I'm gonna do is, you have to get a nice straight line. So on this one, I use this blade here, this one here, the sharp blade. You have to get a nice straight line. So if you look at that now, that's nice and straight. You don't want it going all crooked or up at an angle because then when you put the plug on, the wires are all gonna be up at the angle and you want these wires to push right the way to the very, very, very end of the plug. So I'm just gonna push this in now. It can be a bit fiddly getting the, uh, it can be a bit fiddly getting the wires right the way in. But as you can see now, I think we can push the sheath in further. The sheath's gone to here and yes, it has gone just past the little, uh, the little cable grip that gets punched in but I think we can get more because there's a bit too much wire showing there and I'd like the sheath in further because then it means we've got less twist, less, uh, less untwisted coming out of it because we want the minimum untwisted. So I'm gonna pull that out and I'm actually gonna cut some more off it. Again, nice and straight. Push it right the way in. Now that's better. If you have a look now, I haven't crimped it yet, 
but can you see the, the wires are right to the very, very end of that? So you can see the copper at the very end. Yeah? And if you look at it sideways, it's going to be hard to see on the camera, but the wires have pushed right the way past everything, past the, the metal pins that go into it to the very end. Okay? And if you have a look there, the, the sheath's gone nicely, nicely way past the cable retaining bit that gets punched in. So then all you need to do is put it in your crimper, push it all the way in so it won't go any further, and nice and firmly push down. And that's it, that is now crimped. Now, these crimpers do work. These ones just feel a bit stronger. These are about 20, 20 something pounds. These feel a bit stronger, and it's a more, they give you a more satisfying. When you push it down, you know that it's fully done. So they go down, and then they release. So if you haven't done it far enough, they won't release. You go down all the way, and then they release. So I do prefer using these for doing the crimpers, but I actually prefer doing these for the, uh, the stripping back and uh, cutting, cutting the cable. So uh, that's it there. You then get your strain relief boot, and you push it on all the way to the end. Make sure that that bit doesn't go under there, because the idea of these is they're snagless. So if you were pushing this, if you were putting this cable back through a whole wire's bird's nest of cables, if it was like that, it would still catch the plug the retaining tab there and push it back. So just make sure that the retaining tab goes underneath that. And then if it is caught, you just pull it out and it will just go over. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's it. And then just to test it, you don't have to do this. Obviously, if you plug it in and it's not working, you know you've done something wrong, but you can get these for under a fiver from places like eBay and Amazon. And all you do is, all this does is to test the continuity between the pins. Obviously, if one was going to one side of the house to the other side of the house, you would be looking at this remote unit here. So you turn this one on here, and then you will go off to the remote unit. And then what you want to be looking for is, you want it to be looking for it going across all eight pins. My connector's playing up a bit, it doesn't always uh, do the pins, but can you see there, one, two, three, four, it goes all the way down. Don't worry about the G down the bottom, that is for shielded cable. If, it, if you were to use, uh, let's say an FTP, this is UTP cable, but if you were to use a, a shielded cable with foiling, then you would be using different types of RJ45 plugs that have the metal involved, and then they would, uh, the, the G would light up as well if you've done your ground properly on it, your shield properly on it. Yeah, so that's it. So basically, when you're doing it, just make sure you get the proper Cat6 plugs that do the, tw uh, that do the solid core and stranded core, and uh, get yourself a strain relief boot, and obviously, know the cable you're working on. This cable here is Cat6. I know it's Cat6 because of the inside of it, but cable will be marked up as Cat6. So can you see there it's Cat6, and Cat5e cable will be marked up as Cat5e. See that cap 5 Yeah, so that's it. This, 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 this tells you what it is, but you'll know yourself by looking at the inside. If you've got a cross member running right the way through it, you know it's going to be Cat 6. So uh, that's how you crimp Cat 6 plugs onto uh, Cat 6 cable. Thanks very much. If you need these products, please check out my eBay shop. That's mrtelephone.co.uk. That will take you through to the My Mate Vince website, which you can then link through to my eBay shop. Uh, please subscribe. If you like it, give a thumbs up, because people that don't like it will definitely give a thumbs down. So uh, please give it a thumbs up if you found it useful. And uh, please subscribe if you want to watch more how-to uh, videos in the future about telecoms and networking. Thanks very much for your time. Bye now.